terrariums are a good way to bring your outside environment to your inside environment. Here we have the simplest kind. It's just a plant with a cloche over it. This increases the humidity and it makes a very pretty display. I've seen a lot of these with orchids and they've been really nice. You don't need any type of fancy jar though. Today we're going to be making ours in a jar, but basically any glass container can be a terrarium. So the first thing you have to have is pea gravel. You just need to have about an inch to give drainage to the plant, which the plant needs drainage so it doesn't get too wet. And then on top of that, we need about a half inch of activated charcoal that you can buy at an aquarium store or a pet store. This helps, keeps it fresh so it doesn't smell. The next step is to add our media. This is just the normal store-bought media. You just need to add that in until it covers about one-third to one-fourth of the jar, including the gravel and the activated charcoal. So that should be enough. And then you just take your hand and you pat it down to push out any air. And then now we need to add our plants. When you're picking out your plants, you need plants that have similar light and soil requirements. You also need things that can withstand a high humidity. Not everything can, like you can't really mix in your tropical with your cactus. We want the roots to spread everywhere, but this one is root bound and we can't really shake any of the dirt off, so we're going to have to cut it. Make an incision. That should be good. And so now you can get the roots to go this way and they'll spread better. Make a little hole for it. Get all the tendrils going the right way. So make sure that all the root is covered up. Bromeliads are usually known for their small root systems, so we'll probably just be able to knock most of the soil off this one. So I'll just make a little hole for it to go in. That's good. And I'll put that in there. And then finally we have this taller plant. It's a woody species I chose because it's going to be easier to trim to keep into the jar. So you just need to pull it out again. This one also has a somewhat fibrous root system, but not nearly as bad as our creeping one. So I can still just knock some off, but not nearly as much as I'd like to. So I'm going to have to cut this one again. Just cut and split, just like that. And then you need to make your hole. There, that should be enough room. The last part of the terrarium is the fun part. You can put all sorts of decorations in your terrarium. You could maybe go to where they sell bonsai equipment and they usually have small little figurines or you could put little gnomes or any kitschy item you want. I'm just going to put some plain old rocks in because I want this to look more like a natural scene. And I'm just going to put them in in random places to add a little bit of a different color and a little bit of a natural feel. You don't need to water it right now. Sometimes during the summer, they might need a little bit more water more often. And during the winter, they might need less, but usually they only need water every two to three months. The uh, best way to check if you need to water is the soil should change a different color, or you can just do the normal finger test, take your finger in and feel, see if it's wet. If you overwater your plant, you'll see because the gravel will have a lot of water in it. So you just keep your lid off and let it dry out. You also need to not use fertilizer. Don't use it. You want your plants to be able to stay in your terrarium. And if you over fertilize them, they'll grow really big and you won't be able to uh, keep everything in. So if they do look like they need fertilizer, like if the leaves are starting to turn yellowish or you see some telltale signs of nutrient deficiencies, you should only give it about anywhere from five to 10% of the recommended rate on your fertilizer package and make it just really dilute. Now where you're going to place this is also very important. Just find a nice spot away from the windows, but that gets lots of sun, uh, indirect sunlight and a good amount of heat, but not where a vent is. If any of the plants are dying, if you think there's like mold or a fungus problem, immediately take the mold and the diseased plants out isolate them, like wrap them in a rag and throw them away in the next room. You want to keep the terrarium as clean as possible. For more information, visit your local extension office or visit our website at kansasgreenyards.org.